Welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Mind Behind, Make More, Work Less. Hi, my name is Falun Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also a best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed by expanding their exposure and their credibility, or also adding to their multiple streams of income. Now, today's Unlocking the Mind, we talk about another cognitive bias. And the reason why we do this is so that we could better understand how we, our minds work, how we make decisions, how we are better able to build relationships or negotiate better. And sometimes, to prevent ourselves or avoid certain cognitive traps that we may be facing every single day. Now for today's term and uh, for today's topic, it's going to be the belief bias. So what exactly is the belief bias? Well, in simple terms, it's our personal beliefs that we value so much more over certain uh, certain proof or evidences that comes up in a certain argument or discussion. In a more uh, fancy way of putting it, it's to give importance, value, or weight to an argument based on the conclusions that you may believe is true versus the actual validity of the argument being made. So what exactly uh, is this and how do we actually see this in our daily lives? Well, it's very, very common in politics. We may already have a feeling or a conclusion on a certain party or a certain par person. We might go, you know what, this person's no good or this party's corrupt and therefore no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter what decisions they make, whether it's good, bad or great, we still determine it to be corrupt, we determine it to be bad, we determine it to be not a good decision, regardless if it actually was. That's because we've already made that conclusion. Our personal beliefs is already believing that that person or that party is no good and vice versa. If our personal belief and our decision or conclusion is that that party or that person is good, then no matter how bad the decisions they made, then we may still think that, no, nope, it's still a good decision. Oh, it might be bad, but we will learn from it and we give a positive spin to it and we give them the benefit of the doubt. So that's personal, our personal beliefs are so much stronger than the actual evidence or the actual proof that showcases uh, otherwise. Now, another example of this would be in medicine and religion. So for example, if there was a, a couple where one person believes in medicine and the other person believes in religion and prayer and their child is sick. Well, the person who believes in religion will go, you know what, all we need is to pray and believe and just ask God to help and all that kind of stuff. And we don't need medicine. And then the other person goes, no, we need medicine. Medicine's gonna work. Science is gonna show that it's gonna work. And that's what they believe in. So these are their two personal beliefs. Well, the person with the medicine will give the medicine to their child and sure enough, the child recovers. The person who believes in the religion and the prayer might go, you know what? It's because of the prayer that got her to become better, got our child to feel better. And it's because of that personal belief in the religion and the prayer that allows her to believe that that's what made her feel better, regardless of the fact that that person did take the medicine. So that's because our emotional ties to that belief is so strong that regardless of what kind of evidence comes up, we still don't really believe it or we still don't really consider it or we completely zone out. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we, why do we make a certain decision and why do we believe a certain, in a certain thing? What is that underlying reason that we believe a certain way? And the thing is, our beliefs are usually very, very deep. Our beliefs are usually tied to something that was uh, a memory or our upbringing, our childhood, or the people that, are, that surrounds us, our family, our friends. Our beliefs usually have an emotional tie of how we feel. And therefore, when we make a very quick decision, it's usually because of our emotions. When we make a quick decision, it's usually because of how we feel. Now, to oversimplify that example, it would be to buy a car. If there was two cars with the same specs, same features, everything's exactly the same, but in the end, one is black and one is red, you might go, mm, I want the red one because it makes me feel good. And if you keep on digging deeper and deeper, deeper, you realize that red makes you feel good because it reminded you of your mom's dress or your father's uh, special suit, or it reminds you of Christmas and therefore it makes you feel good. It's those emotional things that ties your, your personal beliefs to that color that makes you make that decision to want that red car. And because of that emotional tie, you make that quick decision. So it's when it comes to beliefs, 
and because it has emotional ties to it, our decisions are usually right or wrong, true or false. And we don't have any gray area because there's a consequence, an emotional consequence that we might be wrong. And we don't want to face that because once we admit that we're wrong to something that we personally believe in, that means we're detaching ourselves from those memories. We're detaching ourselves from those stories and from those reasons that we actually feel a certain way that links us to those personal beliefs. So how do we avoid this when it comes to our belief biases? Well, number one, we need to recognize and know that this is affecting us. It's personally affecting us and we know that it's going on where we're making the decision. We might ask ourselves, why do we believe this way? Or have we come to a conclusion without even hearing certain things or hearing the evidence or hearing the proof? Are we already set on a conclusion? If we say yes to that question, then we need to start doing something different. And we need to start thinking a little bit differently. For instance, a probabilistically way of thinking. There's always a probability of us being right and wrong. And therefore we have to be accept that there's always a percentage in there somewhere, whether it's high or low, there's always a probability of us not being correct just because we believe in a certain way. And when we start understanding and we start accepting that fact, then we're gonna be a little bit more open-minded. We're gonna be able to listen to people. We're gonna be able to accept more different uh, uh, advice or different opinions. And, and more importantly, we're able to listen to the words and the content and not just blind ourselves based on who's saying it or what party's saying it or who's presenting it or who's doing the actual talking or the presenting. So when that happens, we can actually look at things more objectively. Now, another thing is we can also start listing things out and comparing the pros and cons and all that kind of stuff so that we can come up with the right decision and the right course of action instead of going with our gut, instead of with going with our personal beliefs, because that personal belief may not have the validity of the evidence or the, the proof that's being presented to us. So that is Belief Bias. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please tune into our other episodes. Uh, we have a lot of great content on, on this show. And also we have the Peak Potential Success Show, the Mastermind Bites, and also the Make More Mind Bites that happens every week. So please share, uh, comment, and also subscribe and follow and like all that great stuff. I love seeing your comments. But until next time, today is the day to unlock your potential. We'll see you later.